The SCP Foundation contains some of the most dangerous objects and entities in the universe, but there are a number of entities in the SCP database that stretch the meaning of containment. Containment is a principal value of the Foundation, but let's remember that this is an organization that's more than happy to bend even their own rules if it better suits their needs. Just because it isn't locked in a cell in a high-security facility doesn't mean that it's not contained. But some anomalies are too dangerous, too powerful, or simply too far away to be given the standard put-it-in-a-box treatment. And for some anomalies, maybe keeping them out of the box is the best course of action. Such is the case of SCP-179, the entity known as Sol Sewer. For SCP-179, containment is focused around the cover-up of its existence. Disinformation campaigns within institutions that study the solar system, and sabotage of research regarding cis-Mercurian space. The area within the Moon's orbit, which SCP-179 is situated in, are the Foundation's two primary means of keeping this anomaly under wraps. After all, 40,000 kilometers from the south polar region of the solar photosphere is pretty far, and even the Foundation would have difficulty establishing traditional containment measures with this anomaly. Though SCP-179's distance may be beneficial, as it's not just outside of the Foundation's reach, the lunar anomaly is kept free from the prying hands of various groups of interest, such as the dreaded Chaos Insurgency or the Radical Serpent's Hand, who obviously lack the capabilities to take to the stars and make contact with SCP-179. Though we can imagine that if the day a hostile third-party group of interest gets their hands on spacefaring technology capable of reaching SCP-179 ever comes, the Foundation would try everything in its power to protect the anomaly from any harm coming to it. As you see, SCP-179 is incredibly important, not just to the Foundation, but for the continued survival of mankind on the planet Earth. But let's talk about what SCP-179 is first. Floating in space, SCP-179 is a humanoid entity with the appearance of an adult female, with matte black skin tone covering her body, and long, flowing hair colored in the same substance. Ornate gold symbols or tattoos decorate SCP-179's figure, some representing the medieval alchemical symbols for the Sun and the six innermost planets. These include the symbol for gold on SCP-179's forehead, a symbol for mercury between her lips, one for copper located near her clavicles, and corresponding symbols for iron, tin, and lead, all placed down the length of her torso. The entirety of her body reflects sunlight, shining so brightly that it was her illuminated figure appearing in orbital analysis instruments that made Foundation astrophysicists aware of Sol Sur's existence in the year 1940. Immediately, research into what SCP-179 was and what the anomaly was capable of began, and the research showed, as her figure suggested, that Sol Sur was intelligent and could understand human language. To date, only one successful communication attempt was made with SCP-179, but the results of that endeavor have been classified and sealed away behind a mimetic kill agent, but more on that later. We still need to discuss what makes SCP-179 so special. You know, besides being a shiny floating space woman who calls the scorching 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit heat of the sun her home. While SCP-179 is located close to the sun, it does not orbit it, and instead seems to maintain a continuous orbit around the galaxy itself. She's really the center of the universe, huh? Still, SCP-179 maintains a tangible connection to our big blue planet. Most of the time, either like a watchful protector or a curious observer, Sal Sur does not remove her gaze from the Earth, and for good reason too. She's keeping our best interests in mind by watching out for anything in the solar system that could bring us harm. Sal Sur is the lookout, essentially. Her movements are specifically related to the coming of extraterrestrial threats, both anomalous and ordinary, which she signals by pointing in their direction with one of her arms and making a series of signals with her fingers. Whether these finger movements carry any specific meaning, such as acting as a way to describe information related to the danger, is as of yet unknown. If more than one threat is incoming, SCP-179 has been observed to generate as many limbs as needed to make sure every potential danger is noted and signaled. The nature of the things SCP-179 points at are specifically objects on a collision course for Earth. Sometimes they're only asteroids, but on occasion, 
SCP-179 has predicted the coming of several high-security SCP objects before they made their way to Earth. It seems SCP-179 has a pretty decent radar on negotiating what defines as a threat too, as its warning signs are yet to be proven wrong or exaggerated. If SCP-179 starts pointing, the Foundation knows it better start listening. In some instances, SCP-179 detected threats before any other party on Earth had become aware of them, and in others before anyone realized said objects were threats. This pinpoint accurate warning system indicates that SCP-179 might know a lot more about the nature of the universe than what at first glance would suggest. This ability to ascertain danger levels has proven SCP-179 as a useful asset to the Foundation, allowing them to prepare accordingly for the impact of incoming extraterrestrial objects that may be obstacles. After all, having a warning system that can accurately signal the arrival of potential XK-class end-of-the-world scenarios from space is an incredible boon to the Foundation, specifically to the COWS project, the Composite Orbital Early Warning System. COWS acts as a highly classified coalition of Foundation sites, personnel, and even some anomalies themselves that monitor space for objects and anomalies of interest. Sound familiar? Thanks to SCP-179, these guys have their work cut out for them. We bet if you looked inside the cow's offices, they'd be playing ping pong and watching movies the entire time, with a probe observing SCP-179 set to trigger an alarm in case anything happens. Foundation budget dollars at work, but back to SCP-179. It was Salsur's movements that predicted the arrival of several classified SCP objects, as well as general space debris, such as incoming asteroids. While this didn't mitigate the outcome of the object's collisions on Earth, which sometimes resulted in heavy collateral damage and civilian casualties that the Foundation had to discreetly cover up, it did allow the Foundation to plan their course of action for when the objects arrived in an organized fashion. SCP-179 even responded accurately to a Foundation test intended to grab its attention, in which an armed Type 11 dimensional weapon was fired from Area 08 and was identified by Salsur when the shot reached 3,670 kilometers above the planet's surface. All of SCP-179's movements have been recorded and logged by the Foundation in hopes of understanding the anomaly's intentions, motivations, and accuracy. And it checks out because the benevolent SCP-179 has been nothing but helpful to the Foundation. Sure, she acts as the bearer of bad news for horrible, potentially disastrous events, but the Foundation is never going to shoot the messenger. They'll just shoot the giant space demon that wants to feed on Earth's minerals instead. And thanks to Salsur, they'll have enough time to prepare firepower the size of a country's combined ammunition, and a nice comfy containment chamber for said space demon as well. But most importantly, who is SCP-179 signaling to? On October 16th, 2003, the SCP Foundation decided to find out for themselves. The event was monumental and resulted in SCP-179's object class being upgraded after contact with the entity revealed new information to the Foundation. On top of the security class upgrade, Level 4 personnel working on research pertaining to SCP-179 received promotions to higher clearances as well. Hopefully that came with a decent pay increase. Unfortunately for the reassigned personnel, they were given a higher dosage of Class D amnestics, with a 10-year retrograde effect. No memories of the beautiful Solar Protector for them. But let's focus here. What exactly happened when the Foundation made contact with SCP-179 that warranted this upgrade in security? The answer is only hidden behind a deadly mimetic kill agent. A specifically designed probe equipped with recording devices and microsatellite features, but most importantly capable of reaching SCP-179's solar position, was launched towards the anomaly. Initially, the Foundation classified SCP-179 as safe, but upon further exploration of the entity's purpose and behaviors, upgraded that object class to the high-security classification of Thaumiel, meaning that SCP-179 is an anomaly being used to contain other anomalies. On the surface, SCP-179 may seem like just another lunar anomaly, inoffensive and relatively detached from anything of great importance. But upon accessing the file's top-secret Level 5 classifications, Salsur's true purpose becomes revealed. When contact between the probe and SCP-179 was established, the entity communicated with the Foundation for the first time. She spoke in French and introduced herself as Salsur, 
and the lookout. She asked the probe if it liked her brother, apparently referring to the sun. Upon establishing radio communications with the entity, the Foundation asked Salsur who she reported to, as they recognized the significance of her movements. SCP-179 responded, saying that she reported, To those who know where to look, to you. To those who want to look, not just you, but you too. When asked about her brother the sun, Salsur referred to the star as Sal, saying, He warms me up. He is carrying fire and loving light. He caresses me with his arcs and his voice and renews me. He is the source of all true light. He is your source. The Foundation continued to probe more information from SCP-179, learning that she was once a child from Earth but would not disclose any more information, such as how she reached her current position or gained her anomalous abilities. The reason for her secrecy being her desire to remain free from belonging to any one person. But the Foundation could not understand. They had to try to pry more secrets from SCP-179's mind, not just about incoming threats, but about everything she knew. Surely she could see the benefit in protecting the Earth even further. Perhaps realizing the Foundation's sometimes unscrupulous morals and constant need for assimilation, Sausura refused. Instead, she stated, I am too big, and you are too small. There is a sea of nothing and islands of light. I am their shore. To you come the monsters, the pounding fists of void. The longing gods beyond our knowledge. I am the lookout. I see the ripples in their wake. You want me to pledge my side no to you, only to you, so you, only you, can be greater. Even if you find, restrain, defend. You want me to be yours. That is not why I'm here. There are others, others I assist, others I warn, others beyond your thin walls of grey, dry paste rock, others beyond the reach of your weary satellites, others beyond the home, our home, others I know, others I love, others you won't care for. Others that came before, and, overall, others beyond the little walls of rules, and bone, and laws, and flesh, and memories, and oaths you built around yourselves until you don't even remember them. Others I love, dearly, and yet, only my brother is equal to me. Immediately, the Foundation attempted to pry further, asking Salsur who the others she spoke of were. But following her speech, Salsur only smiled and stated that she had no more words to say, before ceasing communication entirely. Since that date, she has yet to respond to any other messages or attempts to communicate from the Foundation and any other groups of interest. While the Foundation did not fully gain access to the secrets and hidden knowledge that Salsur surely possesses, they can sleep safely knowing that they have the galaxy's best and literal brightest security alarm they could possibly ask for. Now go check out SCP-096, look at a picture of Shy Guy in Space, the Shy Guy Questions and Theories SCP Animation, and NASA Lies SCP-2001 Space Oddity SCP Animation for more Space SCPs.